OK. So the sensor that I'm going to use or tell you about has two little windows in it. One's an emitter and one's a receiver. Out of the emitter comes one little bit of LiDAR light, a little flash of the laser light. It hits a target and it bounces back. And then going into the, going into the other um, hole is there's a sensor. It's called a single photon avalanche diode. It's a really cool bit of kit that tells you when the photons arrive. And by knowing when the photons left and knowing when the photons come back, I can tell you how far away you are. Or if you're a robot, I can tell you how far to the wall or how far to the ground, if there's ground underneath you. And it's kind of a clever little deal. This is the third one of these we built. They all work on the same principle, and I'll talk about all those. But basically, light goes out, light comes back, I measure the time of flight, divide by two, multiply by the speed of light, and I get distance. And that's how it works. It's also about the size of two grains of rice, maybe a little lower. A little bragging about ST. Um, we're a really big company. Um, we've sold 500 million units now. We're selling them like crazy, and they're in about 10 or 20 versions of cell phones. It might even be in the one you've got. It's hard to tell. We are proud of the SPAD. It's the coolest part of the whole system, and it's really what we built that makes us different from anybody else. We're going to tell you that our chip is its accurate, but it's all in one. It's only one, one little chip you have to buy. It is flexible to integrate. You just put it behind a piece of glass and you're good. And it adds kind of fun little value to whatever product you're building. There are other ways to um, tell distance. There's capacitive, ultrasonic, conventional IR, and the time of flight. I'm here to convince you ours is cheaper, faster, smaller, better, less power consuming, and all round wonderful. You believe that? It can be used for a range of things. In here, we've got a, a, a method of perhaps a gesture detect. It won't see your finger, but it will see your hand if you can wave at something. So if you want to, well, let's call it gross gesture detect. It works really well for that. Um, and it's pretty simple. You turn it on, you let it range, and you get a bunch of numbers. And when they go up and down, you got it. So we have three. Let's call them the short distance, the medium distance, and the long distance. It's the really, really, really inexpensive, the really inexpensive, and the inexpensive. Most of my talk is on the last one because it's brand new and they gave me an award. So we'll move on that. But whatever I say for the, uh, the new one pretty much works for the other ones too. Uh, five millimeters by two and a half millimeters. It's cutting edge. It's fast. It's in a, oh, the cool thing. Inside this little teeny chip that's only a millimeter and a half tall, is the world's tiniest little teeny itty bitty lens. It's really cool. And we spent a lot of millions of dollars developing it, so you should appreciate it. But in the end, all the lens does is gather more light, allow me to see farther. Because the, lens, the laser light that I'm putting out is a lot less annoying, if you could see it, than is an LED. Picture of it here showing the emitter cone and the receiver cone. The reason I have these shown up as cones is the laser light is not focused. It goes out at 25 degrees. So it will light up a person's chest at about a meter, and that's the field of view. And it'll get a lot of photons coming back, and that's what I see. I cannot see if the person's chin is sticking out of their chest or whether they're moving their hand a little bit. I get a range of all the photons I come back, and I average that and get a distance. One of the things this chip can do, if you're not interested in that whole cone, is you can narrow the field of view. You're not going to change the laser. I won't let you do that because I don't want it to become non-eye safe. Eye safe is the most important part of this whole chip. Even if it didn't work, at least it's not going to hurt anybody. And lasers can be kind of scary. So what you want to do is you narrow the field of view by making the region of interest smaller. Now, applications. TOF stands for time of flight, if you ask me. It's good for focusing your cell phone camera. That's where 95% of them go. It's good for keeping your robotic your robots and your vacuum cleaners and all sorts of things from hitting walls or falling off desks or downstairs or whatever they do. It's really good for that. One of the big markets we're trying to get into is convincing all the laptop manufacturers to put one right at the top. And what it would do is see that you're not looking at your laptop because you're gone. It would turn off your screen, save a lot of power. When you come back, 
uh, the power of the screen comes back on. It wouldn't have, you wouldn't have to do anything and you'd be very happy. One of the things it can do, however, is set thresholds. So your CPU doesn't even have to be alive. The chip will interrupt when somebody comes close. It will send an interrupt when somebody goes away. It will send interrupts when you can configure this. What, based on distance, what's happening? And you'll get an interrupt. And then you can develop your product around that interrupt. Every ST sensor comes with a development kit. Makes it really easy. It comes with software. ST, as a general rule, doesn't sell software. We'll give you the software. You, we just sell you the hardware. So all this is on our website. Lots of ways to develop with ST processors. And the software. We give you the software. So just stop by the website, buy your sensor, it'll tell you where to go and you should be able to download it and your PC will be drawing graphs. If anybody has any questions, ST Microelectronics is right over there. I got at least eight guys that can help you with all your sensor needs.